All right. Thank you again for joining me today. We're excited to hear more about your company's role in the mining industry and your current initiatives. Let's begin with the introduction of yourself, your role, and your company. Yes, my name is Kurt Budge. I'm the chief executive of Leading Edge Materials. I joined the company in May this year. And Leading Edge is uh, an emerging supplier of critical raw materials in Europe, listed in Toronto and Stockholm. So what makes Leading Edge fairly unique is that we have a portfolio which is all critical raw materials, and all our projects are located in the EU. Specifically, we have graphite, a graphite mine in Sweden, 100% owned, an advanced heavy rare earth development project in Sweden, also 100% owned, and then base metals exploration in Romania. So this conversation has been taking place in Europe over the last few years around overdependence on raw materials and products from China. We believe that our company is, is part of that secure and sustainable sources of supply of some of the raw materials that Europe needs to develop the supply chains supply chain capability that has been uh, let go to China. Coming on to a little bit more detail. So we have a built and permitted graphite mine called Voxner. The, we did a PEA in 2021 to look at the opportunity to go downstream uh, into added materials production that produced a positive set of economics. My coming on board in May this year, I'm now looking at the strategic options about how we uh, bring Voxner back into commercial production. It's been on care and maintenance for a num number of years but natural graphite is on the critical raw materials list. With Nora Share, as I described, it's Europe's most advanced heavy rare earths project. Again, it's 100% owned. Again, we did a PEA in 2021, scoping study, another strong set of economics. The project itself has actually been studied for 15 years and lots of technical studies. And in 2015, the rare earths was actually studied to pre-feasibility. So it's a a bit of a misnomer to describe it as being at just scoping study PEA level, because the only reason that we've done a PEA in 2021, we've included other minerals in the suite of products that we can sell from the mine. So this year has been particularly one of movement with Nora Share. We put in an application for strategic project status under the EU's Critical Raw Materials Act. That happened uh, last month in August. And we're looking at uh, submitting the new mining lease uh, for the project in later this year. And then finally, we have the Bihor Sud exploration project in, Sweet, in Romania. That has both nickel cobalt, but also polymetallic mineralization. Um, we have access to extensive underground development. So we're actually in the guts of what we hope could be a deposit. And we're soon to kick off our exploration drilling for this year um, with the initial focus on the nickel cobalt nickel, but then moving on to polymetallic mineralization. So we have the opportunity, we're currently at 51% there, but we have the opportunity to, to provide the funding and move to 90%. There's a very experienced leadership team in the company. Lars Eric Johansson was a former president and CEO of Ivaho Mines. Daniel Major is a mining, mining engineer. He's also the CEO of Goviex, another Canadian listed uh, mining company. Eric Kraft is our strategic cornerstone shareholder. He's been investing in the company since uh, for the last eight years at least uh, and has really brought on investors who have a long-term um, focus to developing and building the company. Myself, I've joined, my last role was CEO of Beowulf Mining, PLC. That was a London-listed and Swedish-listed um, exploration development company. But for the last eight, year, eight and a half years, I was operating in Sweden. So I'm very familiar with the industry in Sweden uh, and all the stakeholders. So really just to touch on the action plan for this year, uh, I've talked about the strategic project application for Nora Share, the mining lease to go in later this year. And clearly we'll then look at the next stages of project development pre-feasibility, but it, there's a great focus on what strategic partnerships we can build in the supply chain to bring this project to fruition. With Voxner, it's very much a case of looking at the options for, to bring Voxner into commercial um, commercial options for Voxner and also a market assessment because natural graphite as a, a raw material is, is still in demand in Europe. And what's our positioning in terms of that overall uh, supply and demand scenario? And then very much looking at the uh, opportunity to put in for a strategic project application for the anode materials project. And lastly, with Bihorsu, we're very excited about the the exploration program there. We've already encountered underground mineralization, cobalt, nickels I touched on, and polymetallic. And the focus there is really putting scale and grade 
on what we've seen. So drilling it, getting uh, good good information, and and creating a picture of something that we can actually uh, consider as a sustainable mining operation. All right, thank you for the presentation, and it was a pleasure to learn more about your operations. With an EU-centered portfolio of critical raw material projects, what's your vision for the future of leading edge materials? Well, number one is to create shareholder value. Um, we have plenty of options to do that. We have a built and permitted mine uh, in with Voxner in, in Sweden. We just have to look for ways to bring that into commercial production. With Nora Share, we have Europe's most advanced heavy rare earths project, as I touched on. That's actually been studied for the rare earths to pre-feasibility. It's not a, a PEA project. It's only PEA because we included an industrial mineral called nepheline cyanite in that, which improves the economics of the overall project and the sustainability. So we've, we've got something that has been studied uh, to a great extent. And the opportunity now, with the, if we're successful with the strategic project status, to actually really start to accelerate the development of that and produce a raw material that goes into uh, green technologies, digital technologies, and defense. You know, raw material, heavy rare earths are used in permanent magnets, goes in wind turbines, uh, magnets and electric motors. And, and these are critical to some of the, the key things we need with all the geopolitical instability that's taking place at the moment. And then lastly, with um, Romania, we have this really exciting exploration uh, campaign. It's a brownfield opportunity for us because we've got all this underground development. So if you, we're actually in the guts of what I hope is a deposit, and we're able, with some of the historical information that we're looking at, to be able to look at what has previously been discovered and say, right, we're going to use that as an exploration target. So very excited about what the next year could hold for Romania. Absolutely. And given the competitive nature of mining, what is leading edge materials competitive advantage in the marketplace and how will you plan on leveraging this? Well, I think it's it's number one, as, as we say over and over again, we are only looking for critical raw materials and we're based in Europe. So we're at the center of one of the biggest markets and you know the, the Critical Raw Materials Act, which has come in this year, is potentially a game changer for our industry. So it's really that the opportunity with having a built permitted mine, having an advanced heavy rare earth project, and then having this exciting exploration program, we've got this portfolio, which has some diversification, which could appeal to investors. And also we've got assets which have the opportunity to create cash flow in, in, the, medium to, in the medium term. So we, we believe we've got a very strong position and, and then in addition to that, we talk to two, two key markets, really, the Nordic market. And let's not forget the Nordics has a long mining history and, and also investors that are looking in green transition supply chains, you know, in the battery space, in the steelmaking space. So we, we're in a really exciting part of the world. And, that, you know, number one, if you want a low CO2 footprint operation, go to the Nordics because of the hydropower. So, you know, I think we've got really good positioning with a, a built mine in, in Sweden, an advanced development project in Sweden. And then in Romania, you've got this more longer term. I say longer term uh, because exploration usually is, but we're already underground, which is another advantage you don't typically get with an exploration program. So the opportunity could be there in the medium, medium to longer term. Absolutely. In your view, what are the biggest challenges currently facing the mining industry, especially in Europe, and how's your company looking to uh, address them? Access to capital has always been the major issue for the junior sector. And, and then in addition to that, uh, definitive timelines around permitting and, and also the you know relative power about being a junior, developing a project, trying to um, get into a commercial arrangement com uh, contract with somebody downstream and the, you know, the relative power, uh, the disadvantage that junior might have. The Critical Raw Materials Act, again, is the game changer for all of that. If, if it gets the teeth and the action follows that the policy sort of indicates is, is going to be put in place, we have, you know, number one, it puts a definitive legal time frame on permitting for a mining project. So that's 27 months. You know, the, the debate is where, when the clock actually starts, but, you know, 27 months and actually having authorities comply with that is a great thing. I've never experienced that in my career in the Nordics. 
And then in addition to that, uh, the EU is saying that they will um, enable the access to capital. You have institutions like European Investment Bank who have already been investing in green uh, green uh, technology investments in, in the Nordics. That's a, another great enabler for bringing other investors in and giving them confidence. And then lastly, um, the EU is going to take on a matchmaking uh, role where they're going to bring people together in the supply chain. So the EU just wants to create the capability around supply chains, which you know is is a capability that we've let go to China and other countries over decades. And now we're saying, okay, we need to put these support frameworks in place to enable all the key participants to do what they can do to make this happen. And and we're very much focused on that. So. You know, these challenges that we've experienced up until now, the Critical Raw Materials Act seems to be part of the solution. Now we just need the action. Absolutely. What trends in the global mining industry do you believe are having the most significant impact? And how do you anticipate these trends will shape the future of the mining industry? I think the number one is climate change, which is driving society's response and businesses' response after that in terms of you know, we want green technologies. We want a green future. We don't want to use carbon um, fossil fuels. And so the demand for critical raw materials that go into those technologies, that's that's one of the, the key trends. And clearly, we as leading edge materials want to demonstrate that we can play our part as a responsible producer of critical raw materials in Europe. And, and create that diversification that Europe is looking for and, and be part of a supply chain that is, is net zero and be able to convince society, you know, clearly through transparent ESG practices, that we are doing everything that we should we we should be doing. Um, I've I've grown up in this industry over many, many years, and it hasn't always had the best reputation. But I think, you know, the standards that we in leading edge look to, to work to are of the highest level and also a level of transparency where we can convince our stakeholders that uh, we, we are making a real contribution and making a difference to some of the challenges that not just the industry face, but you know the society and the planet face. Absolutely.